Hey guys, it's Chris. Today we're working on the uh, Nissan Frontier. It is a 2003. Yeah. What we're going to be doing is brakes. We're going to be putting new cross drilled slotted rotors on uh, this side. I've already done the driver's side, but it was so hot outside that I, uh, I had to rearrange and put the Firebird outside. So I can bring this one in and uh, yeah, do it from here. So, what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need a 3 8 drive uh, ratchet. You're going to need some metric sockets. And you may, depending on how many you have, uh, what size limits, need a half inch set also because a couple of these bolts are tight um, so jack up your vehicle and I'm going to be using my newer earthquake to get this tire off <coughs> this thing is awesome this wrench has 900 foot pounds of torque <coughs> so you got to be careful as you saw <coughs> in the uh, camera the converter video <coughs> this thing will break nuts off <coughs> jack stand. So here's what we got. Let me get this camera a little closer. It is on a tripod, so hopefully my wobbly self will uh, be able to. Okay, so what you first want to do is remove the caliper. There's a bolt here and a bolt down here. It's a 14 millimeter. 14. I don't know if you can see it. So what you're going to do now is you're going to pull the caliper off. It'll just wiggle itself free. Now, you can, you're, we're going to need a uh, C-clamp, which is a big C-clamp. Mine is about this big. The reason is, is I like to open it up, and I have a small block of steel that I've had for about 30 years. And I put it in here, and I go to use the C-clamp on this side, and I squish the pistons back in. This is a dual piston design, so what I like to do is just kind of don't let the caliper hang on the on the brake line because that'll damage the brake line from the inside out, and then you're going to have all sorts of problems, and uh, you don't even want to tackle getting these bolts free. And I'll show you a trick later on when we're almost done. What I'll do is I'll just I'll hand view you for a second. So here's the uh, caliper removed. Like I said, do not hang it. You can rest it right on top of the ball joint behind the dust cover. It'll be fine. You're going to also need to remove the caliper holding plate. So you can grab your brake shoes and just kind of slide them and they'll come out. Now these brake pads, shoes, pads, actually look what the hell is it? not so bad. But we're going to be replacing them with ceramic brakes. These uh, right here are semi-metallic and uh, they're fine. But I had a problem on the other side. With, with these, and this is doing the same thing. So you see how this uh, nut is nice and greasy, and the, the rubber the rubber is still intact. Well, on both sides, the bottom one seizes up. So I had to actually take this in the press and, and get it off, which is probably what I'll have to do to this one. Um, but right now, what you're going to need to do is remove these two bolts. I think they're 19 mil. Okay, sorry about that. Now you'll notice on these uh, caliper bolts, this is what allows your caliper to slide in and out to adjust for brake usage. When they fail, now this this will click back in, this dust cap will just stay on there and then it'll work right now. When they fail, they seize up in here. Now this is a 17 millimeter wrench. And you see how this lines up? Well, this lines up to a groove in the back of the, uh, when the caliper goes over this up here, I don't even see it. There is a, uh, I don't know if I can't even see it. There's a little groove in there that that has to line up with. So they can turn and you can adjust them. Okay, so they turn and you can adjust them. Um, but 
you know, this one's going to be seized up. So this is going to be a pain in the butt. Um, I have a press, so I can stick a wrench in here and just go bloop and pop it down. I'll put a wrench on here and I'll press on the wrench, leave this C-clamp to the plate, and then push down on it and it pops out. And then we'll re-grease this. Now this has been a problem on both sides. Um, you can take a hammer and bang it if you can get the wrench around the back end of it like this. So put the wrench in like this and just bang hopefully stationary and you can bang on this piece and knock it free. Stick it in the vise, you know, if you have access to a vise. What I like to do as a future safety precaution, and I'll show you why, is put your lug nuts back on. You ain't got to tighten them up. It's just to protect the threads from this future step. Use your hammer and a flathead screwdriver and just tap around here. This will pop free, and once it's uh, loose enough, you can just pry this, twist the screwdriver a little bit, rotate it around, and it will come out, and inside, it's yucky. So another item for your tool list, is going to be some rags. Um, yeah. I'm going to lay one underneath here, just for my creasy stuff. Now, behind all this grease, let me wipe some of it off so we can get a better view. You have a cotter pin, a safety nut holder, so there's a hole in this bolt that this pin runs through. This little piece sits over the bolt and has grooves in it, like teeth, that this pin will slide in and prevent it from backing out the nut. This grips the nut, which prevents you from having it come off. Now this can be taken out with a screwdriver, a pair of pliers. So if if you're lucky you can take your hammer and bang this loose like that and pull it out. Oops. This is greasy. Okay. So there's your pin. Now this piece just comes right off. Right? That's the star, the teeth. They're sharp, so be careful. You can toss everything in the dust cap. Keep, uh, keep dirt out of it. Now you have your bolt. Now this bolt is, this is a one inch, right? Now I have a 15, 16, so that's too small. But it's like a little bit larger than an inch, so I'm cheating. There. It's not on super tight. I mean, you can just use an adjustable wrench and, uh, get it off. So, once you crack it loose, it's super loose, just... And remember, it's all greasy, and you will get dirty. So if you have gloves, if you want to wear gloves, they're going to rip on you anyway. So with that nut removed, let me adjust this camera here. There we go. With that nut removed, wiggle this, and this is why you want a rag underneath, because you're going to have this washer with a key in it, because there's a key on the bottom of this nut, and your outer wheel bearing. Now. With the outer wheel bearing removed, you can remove the entire rotor. Now, keep in mind there is a um, seal, uh, inner seal for the inner bearing that you'll have to just pull. Now, there's your spindle, and here's the rotor, the back side of it. Now. What happens is you have to take these bolts out. They're not super hard. You could probably do them with a long extension or deep well socket. Don't use 12 points. Use 6 points. I'm going to, once again, use the, uh, yeah, the earthquake wrench or gun and uh, take this out. With, uh, with the bolts removed, now what you want to do is, this is a very thick seal, so I'm taking my flat screwdriver that I uh, had before, and I'm just going to pop this up. There it is. Now it's press fit, um, so you can wipe this off the best you can, because you're going to clean it. Now if your seal's good, you can reuse this. 
So what I'll do is I'm just going to wipe this with a rag. I'm not too uh, worried about it. It wasn't leaking. Now what happens is that seal rides back here. See that? This is where it seats. So make sure this is clean. This area around the inside of the hub is clean. Now we're going to clean all this up and regrease it. But I just want to let you see where it sits. So this seal sits right here. And the hub is, of course, on top. So this is your oil seal for your bearing surfaces. Now, with that seal removed, you can just reach your finger in here and grab this old bearing and stick it on your grease rag here. And you can see in here, it's pretty crusty, uh, a lot of grease. This is where your, your junky old rags are going to come into play. And what I'm doing now is I'm just going to stuff one in here. Why? Because I need to hit this with a hammer. And uh, I'm going to use a piece of wood. That's another little uh, thing you'll need. So we don't scratch the threads up. These are steel toes too. So I'm just going to angle this so I have a little bit of room. Put my block on here and I'm going to hit the block with a hammer. Hopefully not hit the light. Nope. Okay. So, block of wood and a regular old hammer. And that's why I shoved this in there because of this goop. So there you go. That's the removal of the old rotor. Now this one's not too bad. I mean, it's not too bad. This wood pass. It's never been turned. You know, it's, it's uh, pretty good condition. It's just rusty as heck. So I'll put that to the side. Now, we got uh, a little bit of cleanup to do. So, this side's kind of clean, minus the uh, goop, but I shoved the rag in there to prevent a dirt rust from falling, because there's a lot of it. So now I can pull this out. Ugh. There's the uh, damage marks where I would have damaged the sensor for the speed. Okay, so now I'm just going to do some uh, ghetto prime here and just clean this up. Now, yes, my hands are greasy, and I'm touching all over this thing, but I'm not worried about it right at the moment. So, with your old one out, what you want to do is make sure you're putting it on the right way. The lip has to go down, line up your little holes here, and put these original six bolts back in. Okay. So, we're going to put the six bolts back in. Now, remember, they will go in really easy, so if they don't, reposition your your hub until they do that way you're perfectly lined up now I'm gonna go to number two so here's the rear bearing and you can check it if you need to replace it now is the time I just replaced these about a year ago Okay, um, so another item on your list is a either a tub of Molly Beatum grease, medium, Molly Beatum, whatever. Uh, I just buy the red goop in a tube, and I put it in my grease gun. Um, so now you want to pack your bearings again. So here's a really greasy bearing with a hair in it. Um, I'm going to make sure this area is nice and clean because we're going to reinstall this seal. So I'm making sure this area is nice and clean, because remember how I showed you how it rode? And I've already cleaned this one, so I'm just going to stick it back in here as best I can. Now I'm going to use my, uh, I have a steel driver, but this is garage style, so you're not going to damage the rubber. Make sure you're good all the way around. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just grease up the center here and the surface where the bearing sits. That's just a reinsertion. So put, oops, dummy. put this back on and push until it's all the way in. Now we're going to repeat the same process. Eh. Great. For the front bearing, bearing, put 
push this back and put this bearing in. Now I'm just going to run this rag around the outside for my dust seal. Make sure there's nothing on the threads. Okay. Now you're going to reinstall the nut. So here's your washer. It's keyed on the bottom. Now put your bolt on. And do everything I just did again. I just happened to look down like, why is that daggone bolt? nice and easy. Now put this doohickey back on because the nut grips this and there's many positions so you might have to move it a couple times to get the hole um, and then you can reinsert your C clip. So wipe around the edge of this cover just to make sure it's clean. It doesn't have to be perfect. Stick it on here nice and center and just tap it in. Don't beat the crap out of this. I'm not man, man tighten it. Okay, so another thing you want to get access to or have is either some acetone, I'm just using some reducer, or some brake parts cleaner, like the stuff in a can that's like comes out at 900 miles an hour. Man, this stuff stinks. Your rotors are shipped with a cover of grease on them, like light oil. Plus your hands from putting everything on there. I'm going to show you how greasy this thing got. You want to do this before you put your caliper on because it's the only time you have access to the rear. You cannot access the rear of the, of the brake disc when the caliper is on because the dust shield is around everything. It's freaking brakes. Woo, feeling a little lightheaded. Forgot to put the cap on the acetone. This stuff will smell up a garage. And boom, we're fixed. Well, it took me an hour. So I fixed both of these. They're moving. They're greased. I took the rubber seals off, put fresh grease in them. They turn nice and easy. No more worries. So let's continue where we left off. We're just going to go on number two. These are 15 millimeter bolts. <laughs> Bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so with the caliper thing back on, we can now drop our brake shoes in. On the inboard pad, it has your squeal tab. So the squeal tab's right here. So I just stick this back on. It literally just sticks back on. And the pads slide right back in the way they came off. Now, oh. It's super hard. These are the easy brakes. I've had pads where they're pain the butt. Goes in the slot, goes in the slot, and that's it. You're done. Okay? Put your caliper on, bolt it in. So let's do that. So now, you're pretty much done. Go pump your brakes a couple times. You uh, might want to check your brake fluid level at this time. Whenever you squish your calipers back in, it does increase the volume in the master cylinder reservoir. So, if you happen to be filling up your brake fluid because your brakes were getting thinner and you noticed your brake fluid was low and you put some more in, well, now you're going to have a whole bunch extra because you just squished out that extra capacity when you squish the calipers back in to make room for your new brake shoes. And here you go, you can see nice and thick. Nice and clean. The bearings have been repacked. So I'm going to put my tire back on and wipe it down a little bit because it never gets cleaned really well. Wipe some acetone on the inside of the rim just to get the road boogers out. The tar and the other crap. And uh, clean this hub up with a wire brush. Blow it off with some air and uh, call it a day. So that's it, guys. If you were uh, watching this, now you have the other side to do. Same exact procedure, 
if you uh, if you get stuck on this bolt and it doesn't move freely, 17 millimeters, stick it on the side, the like the grippy side, it'll fit in here like this. Put it in a vise, just the head, and smack the wrench, and it'll make this sucker come free. If you don't have access to a press, I mean, you might, these are aluminum, so you might pop this if you're too rough with it. Just take your time, uh, shoot some penetrating oil in it. This is just PB, power, penetrating catalyst, powerful blaster. Um, I got this as seen on TV at Rite Aid, like, uh, I don't know, a long time ago, probably in the 90s. And, uh, yeah, blasterproducts.com. I don't even know if they're still around. But, anyway, it works really good. Or any uh, spray will work. So that's it. Uh, that's uh, front rotors and pads and bearings on a 2003 Nissan Frontier XE two-door King Cab, whatever you call it, extended ca extended cab, two-wheel drive, four-banger turd. So I hope this helps you, and uh, I look forward to any comments, questions, and I'll answer them right away, or within a day. So that's all, guys. I hope this helps you in some way, shape, or form. And uh, take care. See y'all later.